To delve deeper into this year's election, let's now turn to our reporter Song Yujin at Arirang's very own virtual reality studio. Yujin. Well, good evening, Jongmin, and to our viewers who are tuning in, I'm Song Yoo Jin here at Arirang's brand new virtual reality studio. Now, as we wait for that important exit poll data to come, let's first examine some figures that we have at this hour. So starting with how many people voted at this 22nd general election. So here we have data from the National Election Commission. As of 6 p.m., it shows that 64.2% of the nation's eligible voters, that is those who were born on or before April 11th, 2006 cast their ballots this year. Now this figure may change uh, as the time goes by, but as of now, 64.2% of people have voted. Now this translates to out of the more than 44,280,011 eligible voters, more than 28 million went to the polling stations and actually voted. Now let's compare this data with that of the previous general election. So here we have a graph of the nationwide voter turnout of the past five general elections here in Korea. So Starting from 2004, it was 60.6%. We did see a drop to 46.1% in 2008, which experts attribute because at that time it was the honeymoon period for the Lee Myung-bak administration and the weather was really bad. It was raining hard that day. Then we saw the figure rebounding to 54.2% in 2012, 58% in 2016, and up surpassing 60% once again, 66.2% in 2020. And data that we have as of now, as of 6 p.m. Korea, time showed that the nationwide voter turnout still went over 60 percent, 64.2 percent. But once again, this figure may change. Now let's first, let's now take a look at the regional voter turnout. In other words, how many people voted region by region? So here we divided Korea into 17 provinces and cities and data that we have as of now, 6 p.m. shows that Sejong City that you see on the center left of Korea showed the highest number of voters going to the voting stations and casting their ballot with six 67.5%. It was followed by the country's Jeollanamdo province, located in the very south. Now, let's take a look at the hourly voter participation here in the country. So as you know, uh, voting started at 6 a.m. sharp here in Korea time. The first data was announced by the National Election Commission at 7 a.m., recording 1.8 percent. As you can see from the line graph, we saw a steady increase of the voter turnout between 2 to 3 percentage points. But what's interesting is that we saw the voter turnout, the figure, jumping by almost 35 percentage points at 1 p.m. And that is because, mainly because, because the early voter turnout numbers were reflected from 1 p.m. So it jumped to 53.4 percent, it then increasing by two to three percentage points steadily in the afternoon hours with the final data, the latest data that we have as of 6 p.m. Uh, recording 64.2 percent. Now, finally, let's compare this line graph to that of the previous general election. So here we have the 2024 hourly voter turnout in orange, and we have that of 2020 in black. So so you can see that some parts of the graphs are overlapping, but in total, what's interesting is that voter turnout for the 2020 election was actually higher than that of this year during the early voting hours. That is until uh, that is from the morning hours. But then we saw the results changing from 1 p.m. Once again, that is uh, highly attributed to the record all time high early voting uh, voter turnout that took place two days in the country from April 5th to April 6th. Now, that's all I have for now on the latest on South Korea's general election 2024. I'll leave the in-depth discussions and analysis to you guys in the studio. Back to you, Tommy.